What's up guys, I'm back with another ramble. I don't usually like to release these so close together. I know I did one not too long ago, but the deal is that I'm working on a really big video right now and it's gonna take me a while to finish it. And so I'm going to be releasing a few rambles uh, until that gets released. I'm gonna do this one and then next week when I see Primer, I'll release a ramble for that. The video I'm working on is going to be like this 20-30 minute long video on the live action Eon Flux movie. And on top of it just being a really long video and taking, you know, a long time to finish, my personal life has also been busy, so it's going to take a little while to finish. I'm hoping to get it out by the end of the month. And while I'm on the topic of Eon Flux, I just want to thank everybody for their support on my last Eon Flux video. It's really blown my mind. That video was a passion project for me. I was really proud of how it turned out, but I didn't think anyone would watch it because I, again, I stated in the video, I felt that the show has basically fallen into obscurity because no one was even talking about it online. Like I couldn't find anything. No one was talking about it online. So I just thought I was just gonna make the video and it wasn't even gonna get 100 views. Like it was just gonna be a video I made and now it's close to 5,000 views, and I just can't thank you guys enough. You know, all the comments I've been getting on it have been great. Uh, love hearing about you guys and your experiences with the show, or how you just found out about the show. Um, so, yeah, definitely thank you for your support on that video. It's meant a lot to me. And um, in some ways, I'm doing this Eon Flux live action video as a thank you for your support to that. And I hope I can make this next Eon Flux video good enough uh, where it meets your expectations and that, uh, you know, it's something you enjoy and you're really entertained by. All that being said, let's jump into the actual ramble. The movie we're talking about today is Yojo Sinki or The Saga of Tanya the Evil, the movie. Now, this is actually a continuation of an anime TV show that aired one or two years back. I watched it back when it aired on Crunchyroll and I really enjoyed it. The synopsis for the story is that basically a evil business tycoon is killed by a train or something like that and he gets reincarnated as a little girl and in alternate history world war ii i say alternate history because this is a world war ii where some of the soldiers can use magic and have jetpacks so definitely not the world war ii that we know <laughs> And so the whole gimmick of the show is that, you know, it's this little girl and she actually, through a series of events, ends up becoming a high ranking officer in the military. And so it's kind of funny, oh, this little harmless girl in the military and she's actually really ferocious. But beyond that, what was interesting about the show was that it was actually this struggle between this evil tycoon and his atheistic beliefs and the god of the show who was known as being X who basically is the reason that he has been reincarnated into this little girl's body. And so the entire show is the main character trying to make the most of his situation and trying to make his own plan so he has a happy life and being X just constantly trying to fuck that up. And so that was entertaining to watch. And so this movie is a continuation of that story. That being said, if you have not watched the TV show, I do not recommend watching this by itself uh, because this does not give you any exposition or background into what happened in the TV show at all, so you're going to be pretty lost. And I really enjoyed this movie. I enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed the TV show, which isn't surprising because this is basically just a feature-length version of one of the TV episodes. And so all of the praises that I had for the TV show, I also have for this movie. Mainly that the action scenes are great. They look great, they're animated really well. The soundtrack that goes with all of these epic scenes is fantastic. Also fantastic is the sound design. Not many anime have sound effects that sound this good. The sound effects in this movie and in the saga of Tanya the Evil Show sound so full and they pack such a punch. This is definitely a movie and a TV show that you, you know, you don't want to watch it on your computer. You want to watch it on your living room TV 
with the best speakers that you can find in order to fully enjoy these really epic action set pieces. Story-wise, like I said before, this is just a continuation of the TV show with this character just fighting in the war. There are some interesting plot developments. There's a character that is introduced that has a personal grudge against the main character, not to spoil anything specific, but that's sort of the setup for the movie after about the first 30 minutes. I also found the movie to be a lot more fast paced than the TV show. I remember the TV show having a lot more downtime that was really boring and that was really forgettable. Uh, this movie doesn't have as much downtime and as a result it was just sort of a collection of action scenes and so it was really entertaining. It was really fun to watch this little girl as part of this empire who's fighting against the communists. It's the kind of thing that makes you want to turn on Sabaton. They are the All that being said, I do have problems with it. Most of them are problems that I had with the TV show. My main problem with the TV show, and my main problem here, is that the story and characters just aren't interesting. The action scenes really are the best part, and where the show and the movie shine the most. And when those aren't happening, you're basically just twiddling your thumbs until the next action scene, especially in this movie. Because none of the characters are very interesting, you don't get attached to them, they're not developed, they're just there as, I wouldn't say cannon fodder, but they're just there so they can participate in the next battle. Story-wise, there's not a whole lot going on either. Again, it's just a series of events leading up to the next battle. Most of it is just a bunch of war generals talking in a room about their next strategy or something like that. There's not much here in terms of story or characters. Which I would give a pass if this was something like Fast and Furious, which didn't take itself seriously at all. But unfortunately, Saga of Tanya the Evil does take itself a little bit too seriously for me to give it that same pass. There are definitely some story and character elements here that could have made for a really good and compelling watch. The idea of the main character finally facing this person who has a personal grudge against them could have made for a really good compelling story. They could have really focused on the turmoil of that character who has a grudge and could have really built up some great character drama between these two characters and it would have made their battles against each other that much more emotionally and dramatically impactful. But they didn't really do that, and that's fine. They were still fun to watch, uh, but it was definitely a missed opportunity. Speaking of missed opportunities, the main character's struggle with being X basically takes a backseat in this movie. Unlike in the TV show where it was sort of at the forefront and she was constantly struggling against this god who would always foil her plans, in this movie he's almost never mentioned and it's not the focus at all. Which again is really disappointing. It could have been this really high stakes movie where not only did she have to have her usual struggle with being X, but she also had to deal with this crazy maniac who was out for revenge. You know, that could have been really fun, but unfortunately uh, they didn't do any of that and it's basically just a montage of different action scenes, which again is fun, uh, but definitely a missed opportunity. I don't think the budget for this movie was huge because by the end you could definitely see the budget limitations showing. There were some CGI assets used throughout the film and there were definitely a lot more used near the end when the battle started getting more frequent and climactic. There were also some animations that didn't look as smooth as they should have uh, and some things that looked stiff when they shouldn't have looked stiff. And yeah, you can definitely tell that by the end they were sort of exhausting their resources a little bit. But overall, I did have a really fun time with this movie. I enjoyed it about just as much as I enjoyed the TV show. If you watched the TV show and liked it, you're probably going to like this too. If you're an anime fan, maybe check this out if it interests you. And if the concept of a little girl fighting in a alternate history World War II with magic and jetpacks sounds badass to you, then check this out, I guess. I had a fun time with it, and I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. I'm Randall, and thank you for listening to me ramble.